The system requirements for Alan Wake 2 just dropped, and look at that. That is DLSS performance at 1080p resolution, output resolution. DLSS performance at a 1080p output is an internal rendering resolution of 540p. Granted, the DLSS does make it look a lot better than 540p, but this is to hit 60 frames per second at medium graphics preset with no ray tracing on an RTX 3070. So for 1080p 60 frames per second at medium graphics settings, you need to be on an RTX 3070 class graphics card at a internal resolution of around 540p. Uh, cards like the 6700 XT from AMD also put in that class, which means you would be relying on FSR2 performance upscaling, which will look even worse. Not that DLSS looks great at an internal resolution of 540p. Uh, you know, DLSS is a great upscaler, but that's gonna take a hit to the image quality, guys. That is the medium no ray tracing settings for Alan Wake 2. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed here because Alan Wake is one of my favorite uh, uh, favorite games from that generation, actually. I found the, the story, the setting very interesting. Uh, the gameplay, uh, you know, was good enough for me to, to, to support the, the, um, the storyline. I also really liked Control as well from Remedy. And we've been seeing the path tracing mode uh, being advertised by NVIDIA here, showing that this will be the next game to feature their DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction technology, which we've seen in Cyberpunk path tracing mode so far. So there was a lot of hype for this, um, and again, big NVIDIA feature set game, so I fully expected their path tracing mode to be incredibly demanding. What's extremely disappointing to me here is that the non-ray traced mode is that insanely demanding. Because guys, like, the Steam hardware survey, I know it's not a perfect uh, survey of the entire PC market, but it gives you an idea of the kinds of graphics cards that a lot of people have. Now granted, a lot of people on Steam are maybe just playing, you know, their favorite esports title, maybe they're not going to be playing the latest, you know, AAA single player release. But the RTX 3060 in September did move to the top, uh, the top GPU, but it's followed shortly by the 1650. Uh, followed by the GTX 1060, RTX 2060, then we get a 3060 Ti. By the way, notice that everything on here so far is, and then 3060 laptop, uh, is below the 3070, which we now reach the 3070 down here in one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh place. Oh, and then the one after, the two after that, actually three after that, are actually weaker than that. So in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, the top 10 GPUs on the Steam hardware survey are all at or below, most below, <laughs> we only get the one at, the recommended settings for 1080p medium upscaled from 540p to hit 60 frames per second in this game. And that just feels crazy to me. <laughs> um, I don't know, what do you guys think in the comment section? We're definitely gonna dig more into these system requirements. Let's back off of the GPUs for a second. We'll definitely come back. I'm gonna like, ah, shrink myself way out of the way here. Storage, it's just listing an SSD. You need 90, 90 gigabytes on an SSD. Um, hard disk drives need not apply. Who knows, maybe the game will run on them, but it certainly does not look like it's gonna be officially supported. You'll also want at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. And doesn't seem like it'll need any more than that if we fly along. Uh, one thing I will mention is the CPU requirements, if these end up being correct, don't seem that crazy. Uh, the minimum CPU to hit low settings at 30 frames per second uh, is the i5-7600K. If we pop over to Tech Power Up's CPU database, uh, we can take a look at that. It's a four core, four thread uh, CPU from back in, uh, looks like, uh, 2017. So they're not asking for that much if you just want to boot the game and get around, get, you know, definitely not 60 frames per second. But then there, the only other CPU list th listed on the entire chart is a Ryzen 7 3700X. Uh, Ryzen 7 3700X is an eight core 16 thread CPU, but not one of incredible recency or power. Uh, this came out in uh, 2019, so it is several years old at this point, and that's all, all they're listing on uh, the rest of their requirements. Now, the requirements go up to, you know, 60 frames per second. Now, sometimes in enabling heavy ray tracing can have a burden on the CPU with that big BVH structure. 
Um, but it looks like they're at least claiming that Horizon 7 3700X should be good for 60 FPS at these settings, which actually, if that's true, is better than the optimization we've seen on a lot of recent games, uh, where we have seen a lot of heavy CPU limitation on performance uh, in, in a lot of recent titles. So at least there's that. But it looks like on the GPU side of things, uh, you want at least six gigabytes of VRAM, and uh, you know, going up from there, and then there's, you're gonna be relying on crazy amounts of upscaling, it looks like, to get any sort of reasonable frame rate if these system requirements end up being true. But if, I don't see why they would put out system requirements so it, that would be like bad in the wrong way, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, could you actually run the game on, on much uh, more modest hardware or settings? Seems like the game developer wouldn't want to be scaring people off this badly. Or, you know, maybe it's all a big conspiracy to get you to upgrade your GPU, who knows? But anyway, <laughs> I think I will definitely be uh, benchmarking this game when it launches. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. What else do we got? What if you wanna just play the game? Minimum low settings. So graphics preset low, 1080p monitor, 30 frames per second, rendering the game below 1080p internally using quality upscaling. That is gonna be a 720p internal resolution to hit 30 frames per second at the lowest preset. Uh, they're asking for an RTX 2060 or an RX 6600. Once again, if we pop over to the Steam hardware survey uh, and look at the, the top 10 GPUs, many of these are below this minimum requirement for an upscaled out 1080p output at lowest settings. If we pop over here, this is Tech Power Up's relative performance chart. And I like this for giving a quick idea of how a large number of GPUs compare relative to each other, uh, especially for people who don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of, of how all of these various GPU generations and names and all of that compare. That being said, this is not a perfect chart and it's also not necessarily tuned to one particular game. This is not necessarily how they will perform relatively to each other in this game. But for ballpark figures, it's reasonable. And the RTX 2060, that's similar performance to a GTX 1080. So that would be around the minimum requirement as well. Uh, this is sim similar performance level to Intel's new ARC A580. And again, the RX 6600 is within about 10% of um, uh, of what we're seeing there, and that's the other one listed as this minimum requirement. If we go up though, that means that cards like the RTX 3050 are potentially a bit below the recommended requirement here. Now it's close enough that you might still be getting that, you know, 30 FPS-ish experience, but you know, cards like the 1070 are below, 1660 Ti, 1660 Super. Those are very popular part cards, 1660. Uh, 1650 Super, those are all, and especially getting down here, pretty well below the minimum spec for this game. Uh, cards like the GTX 1060, which still featured very prominently on the Steam hardware survey. That is only 63% of the performance of the minimum listed GPU. And so, uh, you know, maybe going down to performance mode, upscaling at the lowest possible settings, sure, maybe you'll still get around 30 FPS, we'll have to find out. Um, but yeah, that's not great. And if you got a card like a 1650, you are way below spec, let alone if you're down on something like a 1050 Ti, all of that. Again, Pop, why am I mentioning cards that week? Well, again, they do feature pretty prominently. 1650 is the number two GPU on the Steam hardware survey, followed in third by the GTX 1060, right? And the 2060, our minimum listed GPU here, is in fourth place. So I'm just trying to give a feel for like what people have in their PC versus this, um, this spec. Now, if you wanna play at 1440p, they're listing 1440p medium, but they only go up to 30 frames per second. And hit 30 frames per second, they're listing an RTX 3060 or an RX 6600 XT. Um, and this is with uh, perform, uh, sorry, balanced mode upscaling. So that's uh, somewhere in between 540p and 720p. I forget exactly what the number will be. Uh, no, sorry, but this is from a 1440p baseline, so never mind. I'm, I'm off on that anyway. But the point is, we're, we're well below a, a native 1440p. We're definitely upscaling, and that's to hit 30 frames per second on something like an RTX 3060. Um, and again, a 6700 XD from AMD and uh, and all that here listed for the 1080p 60fps. Now, I also, just to give more, let's give more context to this. What if we looked at something like Cyberpunk, right? A lot of people, you know, Cyberpunk, pretty demanding game. I get it's a few years old now at this point, but let's look at 1440p ultra settings 
with a little bit of upscaling. Uh, DLSS uh, quality 1440p upscaling on some relatively modest cards. Some of the ones are listed here, like the RTX 3060, RX 6700 XT. This is from one of my head-to-head uh, -head comparison videos. And if we go ahead and look at this, uh, we are seeing that something like an RTX 3060 can hit almost 60 frames per second at 1440p Ultra with DLSS quality and Cyberpunk. A card like the 6700 XT at 1440p Ultra, FSR2 quality upscaling is well over 60 FPS in the built-in benchmark mode. Sure, there are some more demanding areas, especially in the new, um, uh, whatchamacallit, I I'm spacing the name, Phantom Liberty update. But again, compare that to what we're seeing here. Uh, we're seeing... 1080p performance mode for the 6700 XT at a medium preset. So definitely expect uh, these non-ray traced modes to be significantly more demanding than what you're seeing in a game like Cyberpunk's non-ray tracing modes. But what if we actually jump up and take a look at, uh, at ray tracing? Although we could mention that for a uh, high graphics preset 4K60, they're saying that you could get by with a 4070 or a 7800 XT with no ray tracing. Uh, although you will want performance upscaling and at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which would probably rule out cards like a 3080, which is similar to performance tier to this, but would fall below the 12 gigabytes, and they did specifically list 12 gigabytes here. So we'll have to see how it would do on a on a um, 10 gigabyte card like the original 3080. And again, that's with performance upscaling. Performance upscaling is an internal resolution of 1080p. So that's 1080p upscaled to 4K, uh, on something like a 4070 just to hit 60 frames per second. But let's hop into the ray tracing mode. Now, um, if you want 1080p, 30 frames per second with medium uh, settings with ray tracing low. So I think that's a medium graphics preset with ray tracing set to low. 1080p, 30 frames per second with upscaling at the quality setting uh, you would want at least a 3070 or a 6800 XT. Those are definitely not GPUs, especially the 37, like 6800 XT, you might be expecting, okay, my ray tracing performance is gonna be bad. But on a card like a 3070 for 1080p ray tracing, especially if you are upscaling at 1080p, that feels pretty brutal to only be getting 30 frames per second here. Now, another thing I'll mention when uh, system requirements, let's say 30 or 60, one thing to keep in mind is they don't usually mean 30 or 60. They usually mean, you know, average, like 30 usually means you can't lock 60. Uh, so 30 could actually mean you're usually above 30 you're somewhere between 30 and 60. So, I mean, if that got you in the 50s-ish, maybe it's not the end of the world, but if they do mean closer to actually 30 average, uh, that's kind of scary. And that's without the path tracing mode. If we want to jump into the path tracing mode, ray tracing medium. So again, this looks like medium graphics preset, if I'm reading this correctly, with ray tracing medium, and then with path tracing turned on. So I'm curious what the graphics menu for this game will look like. It looks like you can turn on path tracing somehow separate or at different settings than the ray tracing settings. Since this is ray tracing medium, path tracing on, we have ray tracing high, path tracing on here with a different medium versus high setting here. So that must be the base graphics preset is how I'm reading this. Seems a little more confusing than how some games uh, do these. But anyway, if we want some path tracing, ray tracing medium, all of that, 1080p, 60 frames per second, they are saying an RTX 4070, you'll want a 12 gigabyte GPU. Uh, no AMD's GPUs listed for path tracing mode, which uh, given how path tracing performs in Cyberpunk, and this is kind of our next example of that, that's not too surprising for me. Um, even if it is still disappointing, it's still not too surprising. DLSS quality setting 1080p, so we're still below native resolution, RTX 4070, 1080p 60. Now, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at, um, at this. So in one of my uh, Cyberpunk videos, when I first looked at ray reconstruction, I, all, I did test a bunch of GPUs. This is the RTX 4070 at 1080p DLSS quality in Cyberpunk's path tracing mode. So I was kind of cur curious how they stack up relative to each other. I could play this for a minute here. And you can see that it with, um, with DLSS quality, including the ray reconstruction, but with no frame gen, frame gen's on the right, we actually are around 60 frames per second at these settings. And then uh, if you do enable frame generation, you can then smooth things out a bit on a high refresh rate monitor, which coming from a base of around 60 isn't too bad. So that's how path tracing mode looks in Cyberpunk. 
on a 4070 1080p DLSS quality. And then we can compare that to what we're seeing here. Again, 1080p DLSS quality, 4070 1080p 60 frames per second. So if I go by that, it looks like these settings here actually do seem to line up fairly close to the performance level we're seeing from the path tracing mode in Cyberpunk, which may point to those being at a similar performance level. However, that wasn't quite the ray tracing high plus path tracing yet. That was with a medium baseline, whereas in Cyberpunk here, I was testing everything at the absolute max. So this was everything at absolute max. Looks like Alan Wake could actually push things beyond that. So uh, they're showing at, if you want 4K, but upscaled using performance mode, so a 1080p internal resolution upscaled to 4K output, uh, they're recommending an RTX 4080 for 60 frames per second. My other question is I'm really hoping that that 60 frames per second is not including frame generation. I'm hoping that's before you enable frame generation because that would be a whole other level of crazy. But anyway, um, so totally maxing the game out at 4K, maxed everything RTX 4080, 60 frames per second if you're upscaling from about 1080p resolution. That's what they're saying there and they are suggesting 16 gigabytes of VRAM for those settings. Anyway, that's what we're seeing here on the system requirements. Um, that's pretty crazy. If you want to see how your GPU stacks up, I will have this tech power up relative performance chart in the database. I can kind of, you know, slowly scroll through here again. The 2060 is the minimum listed. Uh, and then, you know, it goes up from there and it goes up quite a bit from there. Um, so you could find where your, your GPU kind of falls relative to all of that. Again, the CPU listed didn't seem too crazy or anything like that but I am very curious on the 27th how this is gonna go. The last thing I'll mention is it is also starting out as an Epic Game Store exclusive, I believe. Um, I be uh, if I'm remembering correctly, Control, which was the previous game from this developer, also started out as an Epic Game Store exclusive. And also, uh, I've gotta end the video here and take care of my kid. I'm actually home with a sick kid. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in the video or if you've noticed hearing little, uh, little kid songs in the background. Got a sick kid kind of napping on the couch nearby. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I, got, I gotta go do that. I hope all of you have an excellent day.